Hey there, Central Ohio. Thanks for joining us here on 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons alongside meteorologist Aaron White. Hey, how's it going today? It's going good. Good, good. Cold morning yeah. out there today. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. 30s <laughs> and uh, yeah, talk about some uh, patchy frost, which maybe yeah. again tonight. We'll have to see how that uh, plays out. But yeah, I mean, it was already getting cold last night. Yeah. I was over in uh, Logan. We actually had a storm spotter class yeah. and I didn't grab a jacket before I went. And okay. You could feel the cold air then. Yeah. This morning, definitely could feel <laughs> the cold air and yeah, it hit it pretty yeah. hard, especially after, you know, having the 70s back on Monday oh, yeah. and, you know, we're right back into uh, the colder weather, but hey, it's going to get better. So yes, it, things are on the brighter side. <laughs> it will get better, but I want to warn you, we got one more cold morning, like you said, as we head toward tomorrow and it will be even colder than this morning. Here's a look at temperatures where they ended up earlier today in the low to mid 30s out there. We stayed uh, above freezing for most spots. Not everyone. Millersburg down to 32, Cambridge to 31, Athens close to 33, and Urbana down to 32 this morning. Bell Fountain was reporting temperatures as low as 30 at times during the morning show, so it was certainly a cold start. Believe it or not, we're going to lob about another two to three degrees off of these temperatures as we head toward tomorrow. As we headed into the afternoon, today's temperatures a little bit chillier in the early morning hours into the midday compared to yesterday. Not by a lot, but you're certainly going to notice the cool weather in place this afternoon. We're only going to make highs around mid to upper 50s for today. That's despite the sunshine being in full force. It's going to look beautiful outside. Anytime you get a chance to head out and enjoy it, if you got a light jacket, you should be good to go. The sun will make things feel a little bit better than the air temperature. Bad news, though, as we head through tonight, you notice how we stay clear. This means our temperatures are going to have a lot of leeway to drop as we head through tonight and into tomorrow morning. It's going to be a cold start out there for your Thursday. So we're going to continue the weather impact that we had this morning into Thursday morning. Chilly temperatures. Make sure you grab a jacket as you head out the door. You're going to need it across the region. The temperatures go down from about 36 where we were this morning down to 34 here in the city for tomorrow morning. Again, expecting those cold temperatures to create possible frost conditions across central Ohio. So make sure that you protect those plants, anything that's blooming outside, any kind of sensitive vegetation. You need to cover that or take it inside if you can here this evening. Thursday morning frost advisory will cover most of central Ohio. All the counties in the blue going to be under those frost advisories. It's not going to be any warmer in places like Marion, Mount Vernon, Coshocton. It's just that those northern counties have not entered that uh, frost season yet. They're not expecting those places to have quite as many uh, pieces of vegetation or crops that are planted and or growing. So again, not going to be any warmer, just not quite into that frost alert season for areas further to the north. As far as a warm up goes, we have one on the way. We're going to be up in the 50s again this afternoon. We'll get into the 60s by Thursday, 70s by the time we head into Friday. And then as we head into early next week, those temperatures uh, do start to cool down just a little bit, but not by a lot. We're really going to stay more toward the above average side of the forecast, not by a ton, but more toward that warmer side after we get past these next couple of days. As far as the skies go, we are seeing a nice amount of clearing working its way through central Ohio as we head into this afternoon. There is some thin high cloud cover working its way across those northern counties, and some of that will drip down into central Ohio. But as far as impacting your afternoon, don't look for it to change much. We are going to stay mostly clear as we head through the rest of the day today. Plenty of sunshine into the afternoon hours and into tonight. In fact, as we discussed, that's the reason our temperatures are allowed to get so cold tonight. Light winds out there only about one to three miles per hour and clear skies. That is the perfect recipe for one frost and two cold temperatures as we head toward tomorrow. Working our way through the day Thursday midday still sunny. That starts to change some by the afternoon. More cloud cover works its way in. We're still dry for the most part as we head into Thursday evening, so any kind of outdoor plans you might have should be good to do it. We're talking temperatures in the mid 60s by the afternoon as well. As we get into the overnight, here comes a little bit of rain chance, just a passing shower or two that 
that could come down across central Ohio. That'll be followed by return to dry weather on Friday and in fact some sunshine throughout the day too. I know earlier in the week we were thinking Friday might have some rain chances, but all of that rain chance now looking to be on the other side of midnight. So you'll be able to get out and enjoy all of the warm weather across the region. It will be close to 80 by Friday afternoon, so there'll be plenty of nice weather to enjoy. Let's talk about Friday night though. We're going to be watching a system that'll be working its way in from the west, bringing potentially some strong weather. This is about the point we would expect it to be at its peak strength. Thankfully, not here in Ohio. This is expected to weaken as it pushes in, but the rain chance with it never really goes away. We're going to stay with the chance for showers, maybe some thunderstorms pretty much all day Saturday. If you got an outdoor plan for the first half of the weekend, I really wouldn't plan on getting it done Saturday without having to dodge the rain at least at some point. This rain continues into early Easter, but some good news by the afternoon. Yes, this model still showing some rain over Columbus, but I think at this point, we're starting to lift the moisture out of Ohio and we should see some dry time out there Easter as well. We'll wrap this up with a little bit of storm activity as we head into Monday before we get back to dry weather as we head toward Tuesday. Taking a look at your 10 weather impact seven day forecast. You can see that rise in temperatures here climbing all the way almost to 80 by Friday afternoon. Really going to be a great day out there as we head through Friday and into the start of the weekend. As we head into Friday night, we will watch that dying line of thunderstorms. There is a small risk for severe weather that does cover parts of central Ohio. That is a level one out of five. And again, this is weakening as it pushes in. So not the most concerning thing in the world, but something we'll keep a close eye on through the next several days. As we head through Saturday, those storms stick around throughout most of the day. Storms again, at least through part of Easter Sunday before they start to push out as we head into Monday. Those temperatures will stay on the above side of normal as we head through next Monday and Tuesday. So even after this round of rain gets through, Aaron, we're not heading back to the cold weather like we saw this week. Yeah, thankfully, I mean, it's nice to be done with the uh, you know 30s <laughs> that we have here tonight. Uh, hopefully yeah. this may be our last uh, frost and freeze of the season, especially when we're talking about near 80 here on yes. Friday. A lot of folks I know ready for that. I'm sure a lot of golfers are going to be out here oh, yeah. even today with, uh, you know, the sunshine. We got temperatures in the upper 50s here this yeah. afternoon. Could be pretty nice for that. I was going to say, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get you out of work <laughs> for Friday, but maybe you're not feeling well Friday afternoon. <laughs> Maybe a cough. Yeah, get out and enjoy some. Yeah, of that. early weekend, you know, something early like that. Weather. Yeah, especially when we're talking about rain over the weekend. You know, folks yeah. want to enjoy Friday when we're talking about uh, near 80 degrees. And yeah, yeah, we'll see how that uh, goes. And also mentioning the uh, clear skies, you know, potential for that frost here tonight. Clear skies would have also been nice uh, for yeah. the Northern Lights. I was going to say we, we <laughs> had a chance to see them across the region last night. I don't yeah. think we really got any pictures from here in Central no. Ohio, but. These are some photos that, that you have, Aaron, as well. Yeah, so these are some of the photos that I've taken here over the last year. These are from uh, Minnesota. So I'm coming down from Minnesota. I kind of got spoiled with the northern lights, of course, in the uh, northern part of uh, the upper Midwest. But there was that chance here last night, and even there's still a chance for tonight. What happened was there was a big release of energy from the sun and that burst of energy as it travels through space and reaches the earth, it interacts with the magnetic field of the earth and that's what produces the aurora, these uh, particles that are charged. And what we were watching was this burst of energy. You can kind of see it there impacting the earth. That actually happened here yesterday while it was still sunny. So we missed out on that. We saw it across parts of Europe, even into Northern Asia. It was still sunny, so we kind of missed the brunt of that. There was still some Aurora actually seen across the Northern US. Uh, you kind of saw it there a little bit. This is actually at Isle Royale National Park in on Lake Superior in Michigan. So you can kind of see the Aurora, some greens and some reds there. Still well too far away for us to enjoy it here in Ohio. Unfortunately, I will still say there is the chance going into tonight, but as we look at the overall forecast, keeping that overall view line well to our north here across the Great Lakes and even into a uh, far northern Minnesota, northern North Dakota into Canada. But hey, there will still be more chances. We're kind of in the peak of the solar cycle here. We reached that peak in 2024, so the next uh, year or so, I think there will be some more chances. We'll kind of have to wait and see how that all plays out, but yeah. you know, always fingers crossed. You, you know, I never actually saw the Northern Lights until I moved to Ohio, believe it or not. I lived in Michigan for four yeah. years. Every time we had a chance, it was cloudy. We got 
sort of the short end of the stick. Yeah, which is always <laughs> the worst. I mean, I remember so many times that you were talking about this big potential, big potential, and then you start looking yeah. at everything, and I'm like, there's going to be clouds coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always the worst. But, oh. hey, we'll hopefully get a chance, and if we do have that chance in the forecast at some point, of course, we will always let you know. Yeah, and the secret, too, take take a camera, long yeah. exposure. Yes. You'll see way more than you ever will if the naked eye. Yeah, it's always kind of misleading when you see all these great photos and stuff. You get out there, and you see this just fuzzy green and stuff. Yeah. Grab your phone, get a cool picture, and then you'll have a way to remember yeah, you it. You don't need to tell your friends that it didn't look like that either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>And transitioning now back to some of the more impactful and in a bad way side of weather. The recent flooding across numerous states highlights an increasing vulnerability of living near flood prone rivers. Fortunately, as we know, many do. And those rivers, they're called endangered rivers, are highlighted in a new report from an American nonprofit. CBS's national environmental correspondent David Sheckler learned in some places the solution is just moving. This creek in Langhorne, Pennsylvania floods so often. Steve Rodriguez paid to raise his house. So this is new? This, this whole thing is new. You've elevated the house? Yes, it's actually, it's 10 feet up. Some neighbors went even higher. This one is like elevated 20 feet or more. Oh yeah, like. yeah. It's estimated 40 million Americans like Rodriguez live in floodplains, facing a risk of catastrophic loss a problem made worse by intense rainfall driven by climate change and by unchecked development. They've overbuilt the area and you get a lot of runoff from the malls, from the street parking lots. Local governments across the country are trying to solve the problem by voluntarily buying homes and demolishing them. In the last 25 years, they've tapped into federal programs to buy at least 14,700 homes for flood related reasons a small portion of those potentially at risk. Many in this neighborhood took a buyout. Rodriguez turned it down. How big of a problem is it in this country the way we've built in floodplains? It is a huge problem. It Maya Van Rossum leads the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, a nonprofit that fights to protect the river and the communities that depend on it. Yeah. She's showing us these empty lots that were part of a buyout next to homes where owners refused to sell. Many of them were later offered government funds to elevate their homes. And yes, it is very sad when people have suffered severe loss from a flood event, but it does a tremendous disservice for the politicians to come in and listen to their sad stories and then respond with solutions like this, because that sad story is gonna be repeated over and over and over again. And that is not fair to anybody. Do you think people should be living in a floodplain? Well, yeah. Probably not. Rodriguez says the buyout offer in 1999 didn't make sense for him financially, and now he feels stuck. Since then, the creek has flooded a dozen times. Van Rossum believes the problem is bigger than just one homeowner. And when there's been a catastrophic event, you will see massive devastation. And in the year or two following, you will see massive rebuilding at great expense and then the whole cycle will happen over again. And it's a cycle we all pay for. David Schechter, CBS News, Langhorne, Pennsylvania. The National Weather Service announced last week that they're unfortunately no longer translating severe weather alerts, and that raises some safety concerns for non-English speakers, especially as we deal with extreme weather this spring. As Pepper Papara reports from Iowa, some Spanish language media say they're stepping up to fill in the gap and keep people informed. Most of the time, if you tune in to 95.7 in Des Moines, you'll hear music or promos for events. But when the skies go dark over the city, stations like La Que Buena take on another role. When there's a, a tornado coming or there's a severe weather uh, that needs to be reported, we like to get on, on our social media platforms, get on the airwaves, and warn people to be safe. Since joining the station in 2019, Alejandro Rios Zamora made it a priority to translate severe weather alerts because for a lot of his listeners, it's the only language that they truly understand. Since then, the National Weather Service started expanding the alerts to include other languages like Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, French, and Samoan. But this week, all of those translations stopped. National Weather Service spokesman Michael Musher says the Weather Service has paused the translations because its contract with the translations provider 
lapsed. He did not say if any effort to renew the contract is being pursued. But for Iowa's Spanish-speaking community, not having storm watches and warnings translated can become a danger. A lot of people come here, they're on visas, they come and work and picking corn, they work in the fields, and they don't speak English at all. And their cell phone, if they get an alert, they're like, what is this? And if it's not in Spanish, sometimes people don't understand the severity of the, of the situation. So even though he never stopped delivering the updates, he says the importance of translating them is now even more crucial. When there's a tornado, there's a riot or something going on where people need to be safe, we like to be on top of that as well and inform the community. And that gap in coverage is unfortunately leaving many in the line of danger. Emergency management officials have been left to recommend using third party apps like Google Translate to translate those weather alerts yourself. And transitioning now to some lighter news, some new video into us here at 10 TV. Take a look at this. This is from earlier this week at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park as the earthquake hit the elephants reactions Monday pretty interesting. Yeah. They actually engaged in a behavior called an alert circle. You can see them kind of gather there and watch out for a threat. Protect yeah, trying calf. to figure out what's going on a little bit yeah. there. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see those elephants really just immediately respond. They're like, yeah. hey, that's weird. Yeah, something's something's wrong going here. on. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they, they kind of take that position there. You can see them all looking out in different directions. They're like, we don't know what this is. But we're gonna be, we're gonna keep on guard for it. Yeah, just stay gathered and just try to figure out what's going on until the you know the shaking stops. But hey, yeah. at least they're alert. They're all gathered together and they're ready for whatever happens. Yeah, indeed. And they said this was kind of like an instinctive thing that they would go through. Thankfully, no damage reported at the San Diego Zoo or the Safari Park. Though they had to shut down the aerial tram for at least a little bit. That earthquake registered a magnitude 5.2, so... Which is pretty strong, I mean... That's a pretty good shaker right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, you can even see the camera shaking there when it initially happened, so, I mean, that's yeah. definitely a, a stronger quake, you know, not, nothing like, uh, obviously, California and other parts of the world have had, yeah. but still uh, something to be on guard about. Absolutely, they're always looking out for the big one over there. Yeah. <laughs> and transitioning now to this day in history, April 16, 1972, Apollo 16 blasted off from Cape Kennedy in Florida. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke spent a record-breaking 71 hours on the moon. The astronauts spent 20 minutes outside of their spacecraft, during which time they walked, took photos, and drove an electric car over the lunar terrain. The command module pilot Thomas Kenneth Mattingly remained in orbit while his colleagues collected more than 200 pounds of rock and soil. That mission ended April 7, 27th when the crew and cargo splashed down in the Pacific. Which is just so cool to think about. You know, I would have loved to have, uh, you know, kind of grown up in the, you know, during the 1960s and 70s during the space, space race yeah. and all that. And just, uh, you know, seeing all the video and all that stuff. Even what happened uh, here, uh, even this week with um, the rocket launch uh, going into uh, for uh, Gail King and uh, Katy Perry. And just watching that was just yeah. like awe inspiring just to see how far we've come with uh, that technology. Yeah, and I, I think we're kind of on the cusp here of like not quite another space race, but another dawn of like space exploration. Because yeah. I mean, we're going back to the moon. The goal to use the moon is kind of the base to get to Mars. Yep. And I mean, that's going to be for, for kids that are growing up now, that's going to be their man on the moon. It's going to be a man on Mars. Yeah, and it's going to be, you know, fueling more inspiration for science and all that uh, stuff as we uh, go through the next uh, several years and decades. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, great to see those types of stories come out. Hopefully we'll yeah. see more moon launches here in the future. But as far as your afternoon, that's it for this version of 10 TV's Weather Impact Show. Coming up later tonight at 6, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will have the latest on those frosty conditions for tomorrow storms for this weekend. Till then, you can find more at 10tv.com.